What's up, guys? Welcome back. Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, we're going to talk about horizontal projectiles, which is going to be the next continuation after free fall. And pretty much what this is, is this going to be some sort of object that's kicked, rolled, something horizontally off a building, a cliff. Some of you do a lab where it's off your desk and you got to find exactly where it comes down and it hits the floor. All right. So I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that using just very simple kinematics. Now, the thing that got a little bit difficult here or the, the change is this is the first time where an object is going not only in the Y direction that we've been used to in free fall, but now the object is also going to be going into the X direction as well. And the, the major thing that we have to understand is that these two things, they hate each other's guts, X and Y hate each other. Okay, so their numbers and their variables can never ever be mixed. So I put this picture in the beginning, I do the same for my students, you have to take all of your information from the Y, and then all of your information from the X and you have to separate it like there's going to be a war. Okay, because we can't find ourselves in a position where we start taking our kinematics variables, VI, A, D and T and mixing them up in our kinematics formulas, okay? We cannot mix information. We are gonna have the same formula, right? So we're still gonna have D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. And then we're also gonna have our other motion formulas as well, like uh, VF equals VI plus AT and VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD, but the numbers that go into these formulas have to be taken from one or two sides, okay? Now, there's going to be some things that are always true for horizontal projectiles. So let's put the always in first, all right? So this, this, everything in blue is going to be always, all right? Now, on a very basic level, they call it horizontal projectile because all of the velocity or all of the motion is in the X direction. So I'm going to have to give this to you. All right. I will say a ball is kicked or a ball is rolled off at three meters per second. But initially, right from the start, there is nothing going downward in this Y direction. So always, and that's why it's called a horizontal projectile, the initial velocity in the Y direction is going to be zero meters per second. Always, always, always. What else is true is that once this thing leaves the cliff, right, gravity, little g, is going to be pulling this thing down the entire way. All right, but it only pulls, gravity only pulls in the Y direction. So we can't say that G, uh, that A over here is 9.8. Here it's 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, guys, and pay attention right there if you didn't hear what I just said. G in, is only 9.8 in the Y direction. Gravity does not push left and right. Left and right, there's nothing pushing it if we neglect air resistance. So we get a wonderful zero here. In the X direction, the speed remains constant the entire time. And why is that the case? Well, because gravity speeds it in the Y, but nothing speeds it left and right in the X direction. Okay, so those are going to be the things that are always true. Now we get to the things that your teacher is going to give you. They're either going to give you D in the Y direction, which is the height of the cliff, All right, so this is D in the Y direction here. This is how high the cliff is. And D in the X direction is gonna be how far does it go? Okay, in your lab with the ball rolling off the desk, this is the variable that you wanna find. You wanna know where is it gonna go from the edge of the table when it hits the floor, okay? So what the teacher is going to do is they're either going to tell you how high the desk is and how far, and you are going to have to figure out this information. But the beautiful thing is T. Guys, T is a scalar, as we remember from earlier in the year. So this is a scalar. Now, what does that mean for the people that don't know? 
a scalar means that T does not care about direction. T just goes on and on and on. So when a horizontal projectile, our goal is going to be find T. Because when I find T, I can plug it in to this dimension here or this dimension. T, I can mix into my formulas without getting myself into any trouble. So now let's take a, let's take a quick example and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let's take a cliff or a table that is one meter off the ground. Okay. And I project it at two meters per second horizontally. I want to know what is D in the X direction. So once again, guys, you must separate your X's and your Y's. Same variables are still going to apply, V, I, A, D, and T. But now we have to separate those two variables. This, like I said, zero meters per second, because nothing is going in the Y, given two meters per second. A is 9.8 meters per second squared. X, there's nothing pushing or pulling it. So there's no net force, therefore that A is zero. D in the Y direction, remember this is D in the Y, that is gonna be equal to one meter, and this is what I don't know. But now when we see in the, in the X direction, I have two unknowns. But in the Y direction, I have one unknown. So the goal, once again, guys, the goal, find time. And then I say that this is like the time dimension. Like here's like the time portal. Bloop, bloop, bloop. So we're going to find T. We're going to come through the time portal and come out here. And then we'll be able to put it over there and everything will be happy. So using the Y information, remember in formulas, we can't mix information. So we say D equals V I T plus one half A T squared. One meter equals zero times T. That's awesome because that's going to go away because anything times zero. One half 9.8 T squared. So I have one equals 4.9 T squared. I can then take the square root of that and say one over 4.9 is going to be my T. Now guys, this is for the X and the Y. So now I know T and I can find out exactly how far that object went by saying D equals VIT plus one half A T squared. I want to know how far it went. It started with two and it, we have a square root of one divided by 4.9. This term, because the A is zero, this whole term goes to zero. That's wonderful and you'll be able to solve for that. Some other quick things, guys, about this. An object dropped and an object projected from the same height, they will land at the same time. And you can work that math out and you will see it. If you want to see a video on just free fall, I will put that video right here. And if you want to see something projected at an angle, I will put that video right here. If you want some more tips, subscribe right up here to help the channel. Thanks so much, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day.